course I'm always patient. I've never had a year where I haven't grown. Mm. Why? Because the fucking well is proper. This portion is like with me, so I think this is when you need to get selfish. Like you need to ask your question. Hiring is guessing, firing is knowing. Like you gotta go fast. That's how you get shit done. That's how you figure stuff out. This is the television. And the television is the radio. So four D's, motherfuckers. Such and a pleasure. We're all, we're all present and accounted for. Thanks for showing up, Gary. We appreciate it. Um, I'll kind of, like we do normally, I'll just kind of walk you around the room. We'll do a quick little 30 second intro on each of the folks uh, on the Zoom here. And then uh, we'll do our second round with the deeper conversations. Um, and like I typically like to work with you a little farther away from you, we're going to start in California. We don't have a ton of international folks here, but we'll start in California. And Derek did arrive. Uh, he just got up from his seat. Um, Derek's here. All right, we're going to start with Derek and Sarish. Uh, Derek, go ahead and say hi to Gary V. All right. Um, hey, Gary. Nice to meet you. I'm uh, Derek Moore, Santa Barbara, California. I'm uh, kind of a split personality. I am an orthopedic spine surgeon, but in my training, I started a startup company that I've been growing for the last 10 years. And, um, you know, that's who I am. And my mission in life is making sure that company becomes financially successful, meets all the goals. And I'm kind of at that point where I've been doing both the company and my practice. And it's game day. If I keep doing it the way I'm doing it, company's going to fail. So I got a lot on the line. And what's, and what's the company do, Derek? We are an ed tech company. Think of it as a hybrid between LinkedIn and a Kaplan. We have a half a million physicians, 112 million page views per year. It's, it, it's a giant in orthopedic education. And understood. And what's the name of that? The name, if you Google search any fracture, orthobullets comes up on Google. So the name of the company that's recognized as orthobullets, our flagship, we have another brand called MedBullets, which is for medical students. Uh, and then the kind of parent company is this Bullet Health that is an unrecognized brand. But if you look up OrthoBullets, you know, we've been around for a long time. We pretty much rate number one for many fractures on Google. And uh, yeah. And then, Sorry, uh, that was supposed to be the five second one. No, no, worries. Worries. no we also got Sarish who works with Derek and he's also, uh, he's kind of like the right hand. He does a lot of the marketing and he's a VFriend holder. So Sarish, say hi. <laughs> What's up, Gary? Um, hey, and, the, and the Knicks basketball and crush it and jab, 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 right hook. I'm in mood here. I'm in yeah, the mood yeah. here. Hell yeah. <laughs> now I'm, I'm a huge fan. I've been you know following you for almost a, a decade now. I briefly met you at your first case list drop in 2017 and then at VaynerMedia's VoiceCon in 2018. You know, I know people tell you all the time how you changed their life for the better, but you know, I can't imagine that gets old. So firstly, I just wanted to say thank you for that. Um, you know, I'm an orthopedic surgeon by training, but I went into medicine for all the wrong reasons. You know, we're, we're at the four D's. But in my house growing up with Indian immigrant parents, you were going to be one of the three D's. You were going to be a doctor, a dentist, or a disappointment. You know, for me, you know, medicine was less of a calling and, you know, more of a telling. You know, my parents told me to do it. So I was, you know, as you can imagine, pretty unhappy throughout my journey of becoming a doctor. And then I found your content and, you know, learned a ton about self-awareness. Um, you know, I was hoping to get self-aware hair, but, you know, wound up with a, a rare resourceful Robin. But Anyway, um, you know, you really allowed me to, to become that self-aware hair and ultimately led me down a path to kind of pivot out of clinical medicine. I still, you know, practice, you know, um, you know, a few days a month just to kind of stay in the game. But I, I'm now working with Derek and really, you know, finding something I'm, I'm way more passionate about at, you know, at Bullet Health and, you know, really um, being able to align with um, his vision and kind of help you know, kind of people like me not make the, you know, same mistakes. So, um, yeah, thank you so much. You got it. Yeah. And scooting up to Santa Cruz, we've got Jeremy Kirby, who is the founder and CEO of Dugout Creative, uh, who's got a lot of overlaps with what you're passionate about, Gary. So Jeremy, go ahead and say hi. Yeah. Hi, Gary. Thanks. Thanks for everything you do. Thank you. Um, again, like, like Joe said, Jeremy Kirby, Dugout Creative, um, 10 years ago started out as, uh, baseball camps. Uh, everything we do is basically around the baseball industry and uh, started out teaching youth in Santa Cruz County with camps, eventually moved on to uh, academies, 
travel ball teams, uh, facilities, uh, running travel tournaments, basically everything that, um, that was youth baseball. Uh, COVID hit, shut everything down, no youth sports anywhere. So it sort of forced us to pivot. And we, we had been doing uniforms and fan gear and stuff for, for local teams and uh, teams across the country for that matter. And uh, ended up sort of pivoting and um, took advantage of a couple of viral moments. I don't want to say which ones they were, but if you see the pouty face on a t-shirt from, a, from an LA Dodger player, you know who it is. Um, moment kind of took off, uh, thought we were going to sell 50 shirts, thousands of shirts later, we're sitting back going, I guess we became a merch company overnight, um, continue to put out designs oh. sort of iterated on, uh, uh, the city collection stuff that we had launched where we wanted to be the first one to do a baseball Jersey that was city inspired because we knew it was coming. Um, after the NBA did it, we knew that it was eventually going to break off into the, into major league baseball and, uh. We did that. That sort of put, helped put us on. Now, looking at things, we, we wanted to be able to look at different things and not just be known as a merch company. We wanted to experiment everything else. Uh, so we jumped into the gaming industry, ran a, couple, um, ran a couple MLB The Show tournaments last year as kind of some testers under a different alias, and then uh, just hired uh, four or five gamers uh, in the MLB, the show space, uh, streamers on Twitch, brought them on board and uh, are now creating merch and sort of trying to build a community around everything baseball. Yeah. Um, and like I said earlier, if it's, if it's cool and it's baseball, we sort of want to experiment and kind of be curious about it and build a community around it. And Great. monetize through merch? Uh, through merch, through tournament fees, through advertising, through sponsors for events, a little bit of everything. You got it. Cool. Work our way into Kansas City. Uh, Dr. Malachi, say hi to Gary V. Gary, glad to be on, finally be connecting in this way. Um, it's been a phenomenal session so far. So your team from Joe to James to Claude, they've crushed it, just FYI. And by the way, I've got um, your first book, just pointed out. I see, it. I I see it. There you go. So I own all the books and looking forward to your new one. Um, so I'm an accidental entrepreneur. Um, I'm a, I moonlight as a pastor at night, but really uh, running a couple businesses is my full-time occupation now. I started a digital, digital agency after I finished my, um, my doctorate degree in digital marketing, and it's done well, and it's more solo, solopreneur, few contractors, but in helping people with their marketing, I discovered there's more holistic business problems, so I've pivoted to do business coaching, um, kind of operating off some stuff that um, Donald Miller does with Business Made Simple University. I have a passion to see other people succeed now, maybe more than just help them do well in marketing. I want them to see, succeed at large in many different things. Um, sidebar note, I'm an ultra marathon runner, um, run lots of miles every week, but just grateful for you, grateful for your team, excited for this session. Seriously, fired up for it. I'm excited too, brother. We've, you know, we've been, you've been so active with my content through the years. I'm very grateful for that. And I'm happy to see you. He also bought a hangout hawk. So uh, thank you. I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be seeing him much more often. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, now we're going to swing over to Atlanta. We've got Nicholas Strand. You've actually got one of his shirts, Gary. I sent you one. Uh, but Nick from Choose Your Attitude. Say hi to Gary. Hey, Gary. Nice to meet you. Thank hey. you. Um, yeah, I, um, I started Choose Your Attitude. Um, I am actually naturally a, a roadie, traveling roadie. Um, I'm a video engineer putting all the LED screens together that you see at major concerts. Yep. Um, walked right out of college, right into my passion, um, lifelong passion. But as you know, everybody has a journey. Everybody, you know, goes through life. And um, 2012, I lost my mom to cancer. Um, Sorry. 2017, I lost my wife of 10 years to cystic fibrosis. Um, as you can imagine, life was tough, um, but she had uh, an amazing uh, story. Uh, she inspired me a lot, um, but those three years were tough until sure. 2019, I woke up and the left side of my face was paralyzed. Jesus. Um, I thought it was a stroke, um, but it was Bill Palsy, which is, has come back luckily, but if losing my mom or Brianna wasn't enough, um, it was my wake up call that I needed to write the book about Brianna. Um, and in my uber focus uh, craziness. Um, when I focus on something, I go all out. So in five weeks, sun up, sun down, I wrote the book, Loving Someone Is Dying, um, right there. Um, and then writing that, um, Brianna was very intelligent and, uh, you know, 
knowing kind of the afterlife, you know, she knew that she was inspiring, but she wanted to leave something that would, that would, you know, be bigger. Um, and as I was writing it, I didn't even realize that the quote she had created, uh, choose your attitude, create your life. And I actually have a tattoo on my arm um, right here of her handwriting. And so as I was writing the book, this brand, it, the, it, I, I realized the power behind the quote. Um, and so knowing that, you know, in those, in all that death and all that heaviness and all that trauma, um, the norms that people go through in life, they, they struggle at society suppresses it. Right. Um, and so my goal, as I wrote, this was trying to help people, um, got it, you know, do that. And so that's where the brand came from is that kind of funnel cool. effect. Um, you know, you're welcome Matt. is the, is the brand. And then, you know, the create your life is, is, you know, the deeper stuff. So it's very cool. Yeah. Um, Cheers. that's where we're at. And then awesome. just, a, and just as a kind of a struggle, just to kind of show, um, April 7th is when we tried to launch and then, uh, March 10th, I lost my career, um, since the music industry went from hundred to zero. And so investing everything into this, I've basically managed to, uh, limp through, uh, without any income or anything. So, um, that's the other part of the, <laughs> so. And down to Jersey, the dirty Jersey, Gary, your homeland, uh, we've got pod max josh and eric go ahead and say hi to gary what's going on brother thank you joe hey gary really cool to be experiencing this very now moment um josh carey eric cabral were the founders of pod max um at its core pod max is a training and event company for entrepreneurs and thought leaders where we um we give them the chance to identify practice and fine-tune their meaningful message and then we help them get out that message predominantly right now through the podcast medium uh, we do this through a few verticals our main top of the funnel uh vertical is our now virtual event PodMax on the calendar every six weeks. And that's basically an all day virtual event where we bring podcast hosts. We match them with the um, uh, client um, guests of ours that we've been working with. And think of it like matchmaking for the podcast industry. They record on multiple shows relevant to their industry all in the course of that one day. In between the recordings, we have a variety of keynotes, plenty of networking built in, and, um, and, and just a, a great vibe of personal growth and development. Uh, totally we each came from this because all, we, we each found the podcast space to be, you know, life-saving, really. Wow. Yeah. Eric? Yeah, brother. Uh, you know, like you, man, born, raised, and, and, and diehard Nick fan, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> we'll get our parade someday, brother. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I was in corporate America for over 20 years and, uh, you know, built up some muscle and some, some, some superpowers while there. And then realized, you know, I, you know, I've been building and creating wealth for, for people who don't necessarily know my name. And then w when I got to the level of, uh, you know, seeing the numbers and like, wow, I made millions for these, uh, these huge fortune 100s, you know, maybe I could try to do this for myself. Uh, so I jumped in. You were a huge inspiration to that um, and jumping in head first and then developed my own personal brand through that process and journey, met this fine gentleman, and we just started building stuff together and figuring out how can we create and, and best serve uh, our audience and, and our tribe. I love it. Where, where are you guys based in Jersey? We're in Trenton right now. I love our it. studio in Trenton. Yeah. yeah. And where do you guys live? I live in Manalapan. Yeah, I'm in mm -hmm. Robbinsville. So all central yeah. Jersey. Yep. Yeah, it's very cool. All right, great. Joe, let's do it. Awesome. I got the so context. Let's swing back over to Derek and Sarish. Uh, let's talk ortho bullets and med bullets. Uh, you guys got about, we're going to do about 10 minutes per with Gary. And, and Derek and Sarish and the rest of everybody else, this is where you go very narrow. Like as if nobody else is here. Um, we've found that luckily a lot of themes hit others, but that's what we want to do in this session. So let's go wherever you want to go. Uh, Derek, you got to take yourself off. Yep. I told Srish I was going to let him ask a tactical question, but sure. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to fire away on this. So, so we, we have a very strong identity, yet we have an identity problem. The reason is this company is a manifestation of me. When I went through training, there were just things that were wrong. And I basically said, I'm never going to let these things happen to other people. 
it's a very political world. You wouldn't think it, but medicine's very political. So I spent oh, the I last know. 10 years. I very built, much think it. So I spent the last 10 years building the credibility, the impact. I mean, our testimonials on our website are, if there was a Nobel Prize for medical education, you would deserve it. But now we're at that point, 120, 112 million page views, but 1.7 million revenue. Oh, I got to I got to turn this into a business. I've never wanted to charge doctors what, for content. Darren, one more time. What is the URL? Because I wasn't able to find it. Orthobullets.com. Ortho, O-R-T-H-O. Now I got Bullets, it. like now bang, bang. It. Yep. So, so I've never wanted to charge doctors educational costs. Our life is tough enough. We shouldn't have to pay for this stuff. We're already in debt. I've always wanted to build a community, a social network, and we've done it. We have half a million sur uh, surgeons around the world, but now it's okay. How do we monetize our page use? We and how are you monetizing now? Literally, ad sense like like lowest. No, so right now our revenue is subscription. Fifty coming from B to C. The doctors paying for educational content. Fifty percent from a SaaS business model. B to B. We sell to training hospitals. Ninety percent market share of all academic. So so you are are doing you know eight eight hundred fifty thousand dollars in revenue charging doctors even though you haven't wanted to exactly yep it's a i'm i'm zeroing in on a very interesting point i don't know if this is a medical term but it's definitely a jersey term have you ever heard of the medical term half pregnant nope <laughs> let me let me t t tell you what it is you have incredibly good intent. You've built something meaningful because it comes from good intent and you built it out and you know, obviously probably did extremely well in the SEM ecosystem, I get it. You have this emotion and, and, and proper one, I get it, even the way you said it. You're, it's kind of like why I do well. I'm one of all, everybody in this room. Like even the way you said, we're in debt enough, we're like, uh, you know, you're one of them which is why your product's good. It's why my product's good. I'm truly pretty much everyone in this room. Um, the problem is you've already established the crossover moment. If you didn't have a monetization against them at all, this would be a complicated brand strategy session. The fact that you've already done it, you're not winning any points from anybody by doing it small. You're not getting any gravy points. They don't know that you're not making that much money. They just know there's something they can pay $9.99 for, whatever it is. You're half pregnant because you don't really want to charge them. But, and so like one of the places I would immediately look if I bought this business, like talk about a business that I would love to buy. If you were like, hey, Gary, I'm actually a huge fan. I want, I, I'm done. I'm like going fishing. I'm just done. I'm good. And, but I want to see this explode. I want you to have this business. You know, that much traffic that seems meaningful because you're winning SEM, so it's intent-based, right? Um, it's, you've got, a, uh, you've got a product service strategy conversation to be had. So what are you selling? So the, the reason we've, we've created this product that's incredibly valuable it's like, it's like a drug that cures cancer, but we don't want to charge the patient. So what we do is we convert that for page views. So we got all these page views. I got so it. now we just have to convert that page view to the business how that much, we believe much, in. I got it. How much which are the, is, I got it. How much are the physicians uh, actually paying, the ones that do pay? They pay about 120 bucks per doctor per year. Right, so you're saying it's all B2B. There is no doctors that pay 120 bucks themselves. No, half are B2C. Good. So it's funny. Notice if you, I wish you could watch this recording. The same thing I started with is right where I'm back at. For a second, because you have so much conviction in this, I had to reaffirm that just now because your mindset is that you're, that, and I get it, by the way, and it's a good idea, by the way was I'm never gonna charge a fucking doctor. I'm gonna charge, it's gonna be a B2B C, it's a B2B to C model. It's not super complicated. However, I'm trying to remind you that 50% of your revenue is B2C. 
with the amount of traffic that you have and the cycles that it requires to do B to B to C, I have a funny feeling your essence is spending 90% of your energy to make it a B to B business and 10 on a B to C and yet it's 50, 50 in revenue. Right? Pretty much. That's the most interesting part of this diagnosis. That even though every part of you wishes no doctor was paying and that you probably opened up that later along the way because you wanted originally for it only to be to B to B to C, it's still 50% of the revenue because it is high value for what you're charging at $9.99 a month. But remember, of our half a million users, only 3% pay. I know, but that's because you don't want their money. Right, it's bingo, 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 bingo. And so I'm the saying, question is- And I'm saying, if I could get you, literally what I'm doing right now, just to give you the diagnosis, is doing this. You're sitting here and I'm just, by talking to you, gonna try to make you do this. Because I believe that if I'm able to get you to say, my friend, I know we don't wanna charge doctors, but they spend more than $120 a year on fucking Starbucks. And the second I get you there, and I get it, cause it's not, I don't think it's an easy hill because I feel like you're locked in, which is amazing. I actually admire it and love it. I'm just trying to get you to not demonize the $120 cause the second you don't, you change the whole product and the whole thing will tip. All right, let, let me throw one thing at you because Please. we're running out of time. Getting doctors to pay that money it's hard work. Getting the institution to pay that money is hard. Look at your teacher's parking lot. There's no money it. in education. I got it. I am very confident I can get $1 per page you by connecting the right patient to the right doctor. You Google search femoral neck fracture as a patient in the ER, you land on orthobullets. I have all the information on all the doctors. So you want to, you want to, you want to build match.com for yeah, doctors you, and you, patients. Um, so what you need to do is probably what you, to re, match.com had 350 of the top engineers in Silicon Valley. You know, it's important to say that because people say things like this without knowing those kind of details. Match.com raised hundreds of millions of dollars to build an affiliate transactional two way marketplace. Uber, eBay, Home Advisor, like. The businesses are very obvious, but if you're going to go down that route, you need to start thinking about fundraising, not about what your business strategy is going to be. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you, what we're saying is if we want that market opportunity, you have to go into hyper growth mode. You got to raise real venture. You got to play in the majors Correct. and get out of the minors. And what I feel is um, that if the intent was to get $120 from every, every doctor, that the business would explode. That's my hot take on, I've seen this pattern a lot. I think you're sitting on a lot of good gold. And I think you have to make one of two decisions. Yes, we're gonna go raise capital, hire a true CTO infrastructure to become a great affiliate based business. Two, we're gonna heed Gary's call and actually be okay. And believe it is not hard to get $120 because of how much karma points we're putting on the board of this remarkable product. And then make it front, then make that the front facing aspect of our business, which will then help us start converting 9.3% instead of 3% of our traffic because it was built to capture it. Right now it's not built to capture that. So you think with 120, 112 million page views still be a content subscription business. Don't try to be a page view business. A page view, well, a, you're, you don't want to be a page view business because a page view business is advertising dollars. You want to be an affiliate business is how I heard it, right? I, I think the real interesting thing is the lead generation, the match.com, connecting the page yeah, view to the that's right. Aff that's affiliate. Yeah. You want to be an affiliate business. To be an so affiliate business, you're running on incredible math. You know how like people think they go on Google and WebMD and think they're a doctor and you guys laugh at them? That's how I feel right now about a web business. For you to be an affiliate business, 
you're gonna need a tremendous CTO and real capital. Mm -hmm. Cause you gotta make all the math work. Whereas what I think you've done is built incredible guilt and equity in the ecosystem. And with a front facing facade switch, be able to get a lot more 120s, $10 a month, only $9.99 a month. And then use that capital to actually put you in a year in a place to go higher and become, I think you have to become a, 10, a $120 doctor business for 18 months so that you're in a power position to become the affiliate business. And get to what in revenue? That just becomes your expenses, right? Like revenue is always predicated on the ambition and reality of cost of running, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's not a textbook ideology. It's what are you about? James knows that he hasn't met too many operators that cared less about bottom line profit than he met with me. It was always top line growth because I was building growth scale. Why I was building for myself. There's a, so to answer that question, I need to know what the heck you really, you know, to your point, I heard you enough revenue to make sure you don't have to shut it down because you're bleeding money. Let's start mm -hmm. with that. Okay. Cheers. Let's move on and see what else we can get to. All right, Jeremy, you're up. All right. Thanks. So we um, we're sort of in a, um, we're in a crisis, I guess, of trying to figure out what it is that we are. So um, I, I, I can tell you right now. I mean, that's serious. You're a media company mm -hmm. that is contemporary and culturally relevant to a niche that has incredible economics and passion around it. And then what you have to do on the back end is spend all your time and energy figuring out what you get the most enjoyment out of, what you're the most capable of, and what has the most margin in selling. Got it. Okay. So that that's perfect. That's exactly what I was going to sort of segue into is we've been confused as to what to post, what to, what to, or how to build the brand because we were never really sure of what our brand was. And I, I guess- you, the, you, you either have somebody around you that went to a good college or buddies that work in marketing because what you just said means nothing. Mm -hmm. It is the okay. number one reason Vayner is disrupting the industry. The, br brand is what a human being feels about you. Mm -hmm. You're, first of all, in the business of leveraging other brands to build yours. Let's start there. I love, For sure. right? I love mm -hmm. the Knicks. You're going to make a joke about RJ Barrett. That's cool to me. I want that. Like, you're, you're, you're fanatics. Mm -hmm. You're not, you know, right? So I think yeah. that, you know, when I hear you say that question, I immediately go to like, what is he reading? Who's in his ear? What's he thinking about? Because I believe in brand the most, by the way, the most. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think, I think you actually know what you're doing. Volume, social media creative will inevitably, your brand, what's SNL's brand? SNL's brand is the output of the feelings we all have based on all the skits. The skits mm -hmm. weren't cohesive. Mm -hmm. The cultural relevance was cohesive. Yeah. But the way that everybody wants to build brand is make every SNL skit the same. Okay. Got it? Yeah. And, and I guess it, it sort of scared us for a little while there because we were so bottom of funnel with Facebook ads for, for quite some time because um, we put out all this merch. We put it for sale. And we ran tons of Facebook ads, spent thousands of dollars straight bottom of funnel. Didn't try to build a brand because we were, we were so new. We were just trying to keep the sure. lights on sure. uh, after COVID shut things down. And so then you know, one of the things that really, really triggered things for us was when uh, Facebook had that glitch. I want to say it was about maybe six months ago when all the ad accounts got shut down. Our sales went to zero overnight right. because we weren't running any ads. And, you know, after watching you for a while, I, I, I agree with you 100% as far as brand means everything. And we failed to build a brand because we were constantly pivoting at whatever was new. Can I give um, you a good piece of advice? Sure. Build your brand organically on TikTok, like your life depends on it. Okay. Four TikToks a day. Okay. All brand, no sales. Okay. So in that, in, in a way, building can I, can community. I, can I give you, yeah, can I give you a couple other things? Sure, please. Just for everybody, Facebook groups are a secret weapon. Okay. For all of you, whether it's, Jermaine, who's going to start a 
small business tech of New York society, whether it's you with baseball, whatever, or you wanna make 50 of them baseball in Ohio, like Facebook groups for you building brand TikTok, go ham. And then finally, every day for the rest of your life, 85 cents can go for sales to keep the lights on. But until you die, you always spend at least 15 cents on shit that feels like brand. Whether that's sponsoring every little league team in the world, because you Mm -hmm. thought that was right, or whether it's running ads on TikTok after you get organic things, you're like, wait a minute. Now I know why Gary sent me here. It's the new Facebook. Got it. Yeah, you definitely nailed it as far as uh, we're depending on other creators to help build our brand uh, because we're, we're bringing on, we're, we're not. Can I, can I give you, here. can I give you a good one? Please. Um, you know how Ch- champion and polo and Louis Vuitton have like signature clothes that are just massive logos. Yes. You should create one for yourself. You should create a mascot like the fucking chicken that the Padres used to use or the Philly fanatic. You should create your Ronald McDonald. And you should give away those fucking t-shirts. Okay. In that 15 cents, it's brand. Mm -hmm. It's a lost leader. Yes. If you make something, an epic character, and it's a free fucking t-shirt inside of every box, and it costs you $4 and nine cents, that's that's one of the ways you spend 15%. Got it? Got it. Yeah. We, we had, we had sort of experimented with that too. When we were going live a few different times on Twitch, we created a character called, uh, we called him Squatch, where it was like a, a major league, minor league-ish uh, uh, Squatch character. And we made him fat just to kind of Love play, it. you know, kind of poke fun at Love it to it. kind of Love you know, be different. I would, yeah. I would refurbish that and get a real animation, real 3D, like really go there. Okay. Be friends. Okay. That was the other, I I guess, to jump into the next question I had too is, um, should I be, I mean, I should always be cautious, I guess, but is there, one of the things that we've been thinking about is sort of doing a lot of research and jumping into the NFT space. Um, We plan on running uh, a creator league within uh, the gaming space and baseball. We plan on running uh, tournaments for for the audiences of a of a lot of our creators. We started thinking about, you know, all these guys have their own merch line, which we're creating and fulfilling and, and uh, delivering for them. We sort of thought about creating some type of package deal that we could sort of put out as an NFT. But the thing that sort of, uh, I, I'm a little hesitant on that is that if we're selling these NFTs behind a personality that is sort of, a, um, I want to call them an independent contractor, but they're basically an independent contractor of ours. Is there anything that we should be super cautious about where if we're selling a package deal with a guy that might not, you know, he might decide next year that, you know what, I'm out. I don't want to stream anymore. I'm going to go get a full-time job. You need to be careful by over communicating to the audience that that might happen. Okay. Got it. You know, look at me yelling about NFTs and -hmm. then saying 99% of them are going to be bad investments. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Got it. All right, JK. Thank you. Nice. We're going to go over to Atlanta. Nicholas Strand from Choose Your Attitude. Nick, let's go. All right. Uh, thanks, Gary. Um, so I, uh, as you can imagine, uh, with, with all the journey going on, um, this was actually all kind of a, a train that I kind of got thrown on, if you will. And when I say thrown on, I don't mean, um, you know, Obviously, I, I'm, I'm thankful for my life and everything. Of course. So I started writing the book. All of a sudden, you know, the, the shirts become this brand. Um, you know, I'm visionary. I see all this. Um, being in the production industry, uh, nothing is impossible. I mean, I'm literally paid to, you know, ask to make the most difficult things happen. Um, and so knowing that this is all possible, put it all together, boom, COVID hits. I lose everything. Um, sorry, not everything. I got but, it. You know. So moving forward has been kind of a struggle. Um, here I am, I've got, I've got the vision. I know how far I can go. Um, but at the same time, I feel like every single step forward of success uh, kind of, you know, is a is hundred steps back because, you know, um, not, getting, not getting past, um, you know, the gro- not getting to a growth point. 
right? Um, because everything costs money. I've got the podcast. I've got the book. The book hasn't even really gotten its light yet because I've been focused on the brand. Why the brand? Because it's not as niche as the book. Um, and that's also why I created the brand. Um, so with what do you, that- Nick what, do you, Nick, what do you want to happen? So I think your scenario is interesting to me because, yeah. you know, could I argue that, you know, you, you, you see things like life is good and see that as a very big business and you're like, oh, that, like, is that what we're talking about here a little bit? So yes, all of that. And so just like, just like Brianna's quote, um, it's so choose your attitude is the brand. That's the welcome format to start the conversation. I got it. Create your life is the other part where it's actually, you know, the, the, the hook. How, how would you like, let me ask you a question. If I said, yeah. I'm actually a genie from the future Yep. and I can do anything yep. right this second. Yep. And I said, and the only, but the only thing I can do is actually just dictate to how you, not how much, yeah. but in which places you would make your money. In I, which places you would make your money. How would you like to make your money? If I said, you're going to make $2 million next year, how would you break that down if, if you had it completely your way? I would say the money would come from the brand but the effort would be in the mission and be able to share. That I understand. That I understand. Yep, yep, yep. We're going to have to separate yep. the altruism from the business because yep. I'm on board, yep. but you didn't start a nonprofit and moved to a farm and eat off the land. Yep. So you're in the business lane. Yep. So in that business lane, how would you like to make your money? Not the, I know the business, of course the business has to make the money. That's what yep. a business does. Yep. How? Right? Like, how would you like to make your money? So are you How, asking like the yeah. brand or are you asking yeah. like- speaking So you have, a, you have books? a brand, right? Yep, yeah, yep. exactly. The, yep. the, the brand, the brand is, is only speaking and books. Like yep. it doesn't make money just for existing. Yep. Right? Yep. Uh, how would you like to make your money? My brain goes to the brand, but I, I, I think yeah. you're going- That's why, that, yeah, that's why I think you're vulnerable. Yep. Because I think you're not making the most, like I felt it from the setup and I definitely felt it in the first few minutes, which is why I'm pressing here because I want you to win yep. and I'm excited. Yep. There is no such thing. I'll give you an example. Yep. Hey, Johnny, uh, Phil Knight. Hi, Phil Knight. How would you like to make your money? The brand. I understand it's a swoosh. <laughs> I get that. How? Yep. Oh, I'm going to sell running sneakers to wholesalers. They're going to sell it. I'm going to make a margin. I'm making a sneaker. The wholesaler is going to buy it. Years later, it, what I decided to do it on a golf ball because we signed the best golfer in the world. Like, you know, we sell stuff, right? You know, Amazon, Jeff Bezos wanted to sell books. Today, his company bought MGM and they're going to make money by owning James Bond's IP because they're going to, because you're going to sign up for Prime, Got right? So how do you want to make money? So I think you're going deeper into like the doing speaking gigs, the podcast to um, the social ad channels and those type of things, I would assume. Yeah, I think the thing that stands out for me, brother, is yep. have you thought about possibly bringing in a business partner who can be the business person? So, yeah, so that's kind of, yes, I've, I brought, I have that kind of actually in the works of a, a marketing uh, team owner and then also uh, so I actually uh, traveled with Dave Matthews band. And so I'm working with Dave Matthews bands, um, trying to kind of team up with his apparel guy to kind of get that. And then I would focus. I on think, I think it's a little bit different. Yeah. Is, would that apparel guy be doing this full time? So like, let me give, let me tell you what I, what I noticed. Yep. Nick. I think you're the creative director of this company. For sure. You're the essence. Correct. You are a hundred percent, not the person that's going to build the business. I, I, that is my, that would be a weakness. Yes. Well, saying a weakness is building a business in the context of building a business is like saying, I can't swim, but I want to swim. Well, so here, here's the deal. So well, not here's the deal, but my life has always been selling myself, right. As a roadie and such. I understand getting hired for prod to your, that. I understand. Yeah. And by the way, that whole world's coming back yeah, and we'll yeah. be back. And so we got to keep that in mind. Yep. To me, what I see is a very interesting scenario where I'm trying to figure out what happens over the next 18 months so that you win. My intuition is the roadie thing is going to come back and you're going to make a decision on, you know, how much of that do I want to do? 
Two, I mean, this is your life's mission at this point. This is fucking your Tattooed wife. On yeah, your wife passed away. I mean, this is huge. Yeah. So I want this to succeed. Yep. On the flip side, to make a brand pop is hard. Yeah. And you have to be an operator and be good yep. at it on multiple levels. I think you're the inspiration and the essence. But if you're going to make choose your attitude of business, I think you need to I think you need to partner with somebody that owns a piece of it as well who's actually an operator because I don't think that's your calling from you you right. can't be at this place answering my questions this way and going to end up being the guy who's actually going to build the brand and build the business. It's not going to happen. Right. In fact, and well, that's okay, by the way. That's right. amazing. Well, I, and that's been, that's been my biggest struggle throughout the year is like, sense. As, as a production person, I'm the first guy to know like, okay, I can't do this. So I need Correct. to build a team. Correct. So and to that, me, to okay. me though, at the ambition level that you have and the yep. importance that this is, that yep. should be the only thing on your mind. Thank who, you. who am I good? That's it. Nothing else. All, so it's, it's good to hear you say that because a lot of the business people in my life have told me you have to keep working until you're dead and then no. you can start getting people. And in no. my head, it's been, no, I need to build no, a no. team. No. It's all about the, because. What you need to do is find someone that okay. looks like me that's yep. in between. Like, like if I was in between, let's say a month ago, like let's make pretend I was the dream candidate. Yep. A month ago, I freak out and say, you know what? As much as I love business, I'm now ready to go into a different version of that that is far more nonprofit. I'm yep. gonna build something with a mission. Yep. And then we stumbled on each other, somebody introduced us, I would have been perfect because I could make Choose Your Attitude enormous. I would have taken 49% of the business. Yep. You would have had all control, because I would have been empathetic and said, hey, this is your fucking, you know, I wanna own 49, so you always have control. I want some protection in case you get mad at me. Da, 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 da. And then, I would go build the fucking business while gleaming inspiration from you. Yep. Putting you out in front, telling the story. That's where you are at. Nothing else will work. Uh, thank you. I've, now, I've been feeling that Nick, way for a while. Now, yep. Yep. It's imperative that yep. you hit Joe Q before you decide to do a deal with Carol. <laughs> yes. Because I want us Act. to double check if we feel good about who you're picking. Yep. Because the you in this situation, yeah. Often picks not good people. Fact. No, I appreciate that for sure. I do have to ask one more question. Sure. Um, and I know you have a, a good Rolodex. Um, because my podcast is of choose your attitude and it basically hits a lot of people oh. of uh, heavy, heavy struggle and stuff. Um, I was gonna see if you might have a couple guests that you might be able to throw my way that yep. of, of good I can. Joe good and I will stories. help. Yep, Joe, Perfect. package it for me so it's packageable. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, Thank yeah. you. Appreciate it. All right. It. We're going to backtrack a little bit because I skipped over the middle of the country, which is unintentional. Dr. Malachi, say hi to Gary. Let's go with you. I thought it was intentional. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was too. I've cried it somewhere else. All right, no worries. <laughs> um, I'm, Gary, I've got three questions. Joe's kind of guided me on this. So I can, I'll give you the overview. And then unless you think I should go in a different order, I'll let you answer them. I think they're probably going to be meta, but maybe one you'll just grab onto. So you got it. The first one's probably going to be about a podcast related question. The second one's going to be about uh, digital agency in small town America, how to kind of stand out. And the third one is more because I've pivoted to more of a business coaching um, business and, and questions related around that based on the fact I actually heard that in a marketing for the now or something that you had a business coach. So if that order sounds good to you, I can just go through them and see what you grab a hold of. Yeah, the third one, we, we hired a business coaching organization for the organization. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't per se, I mean, I, I had three or four sessions. It was lovely. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, I enjoyed it, but I, um, I, I think many, I think you have to know how you learn. Mm -hmm. The reason I've never really had a business coach is the same reason I was a terrible student. I don't learn from a dictation opinion point of view. I learn through osmosis of the living it. So, but if you learn, and by the way, even just watching how you follow me, you may do great with a business coach. What you wanna make sure that you do with a business coach is make sure that she or he is not preying on your insecurities. Mm -hmm. Well, what I, what I mean by that is I actually became a business coach mm -hmm. because I've been helping people. I remember. Marketing. And I just was curious because I also know your opinion on a lot of people charge for things that really is free out there. Um, and people I think, I, look, it's the way I think about even 40, you have to be able to put your head on the pillow and feel great. 
Mm-hmm. If you feel like you're spending meaningful time and, you're, and you really feel like you really, see, for example, I really, 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 really feel this is underpriced. Like, I know what I told Derek is right. Not even like fucking a debate. It's very easy for me to audit. I've had too much pattern recognition. I have too much, like it, I'm just in the prime of my career. And he's at a very clear and present scenario of one of those two options. He's gonna now think about that. Mm-hmm. It, I know for fact what I told Nick is 100% right for it, right? If you can get, if you truly believe Malika, in your sense that that's what you can do, it feels amazing, not shitty. The reason I hate it is people just take courses to sell people courses and just want to make money. Like they don't give a fuck. I'm, I hate 4Ds. Can I tell you why? One person that doesn't think it's good is a vulnerability to me. I just <laughs> enjoy the shit. It's why I built be friends. Like I'm finding it like, these guys don't realize how vulnerable 4Ds is. Like I'm getting more busy, like, well, with me, they'll be great, they're amazing. But like with me, I do this because I like it so much and I learn, I like listening. It's like a win, 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 win situation. So I think for you, you just have to make sure you're pumped and you believe in your shit. And if not, get your, get your knife sharper. Totally, totally. Well, let me just ask you the, let me just ask you the podcast question, go up the list and tell yeah, Joe's to move on. So I, so I actually get ready to launch a podcast. I know you've been preaching that for years, yes. but I'm not ready to do it, but I'm, I'm, the par- paralysis of analysis. Um, I'm obsessed with seeing other people succeed. Literally, it's Why? like a trick for me. And oh, I want to interview. Yeah, I want to interview a wide variety of people, but I've been caught like business coaching stuff, ultra marathon running stuff. Do it um, all. Yeah, you're, you're, you're such a fan of my stuff. My stuff's yeah. all over the fucking place. So do you brand it personally? Yes. Like, uh, or, 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 yes. Like, because okay. then you're then you're the catch all. Okay. All right. Well, that like, makes lit- sense. literally call it the DMO show. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Perfect. Well, that answers that question. I'm going to move up to the next one. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Second one was. You so, know why it's important, by the way? I want everybody to hear this. Yeah, please let me know. The more broadly you brand it, the more flexible you are. I got shit on, you know, for making, like, for not, like, calling myself, like, everybody made fun of me on Twitter. I'll never forget it. A lot. They're like, oh, that was stupid. You should have been wine guy or wine dude at wine dude or wine Gary. Why didn't you, why'd you do that, Gary? And in my mind, I'm like, cause you, you don't understand. I'm 32 years old. <laughs> like, like I'm going to be a lot of things. I'm going to be Gary V. I'm going to be Gary V. Like, you know, and so that's what you, you're a young dude. Mm-hmm. You might, you might want to really talk about chocolate making in seven years. And your podcast can do that if it's the, you know, DMO show. Very true. Yeah, no, perfect. That answered that question. Exactly. Um, and one of these days we'll have your team on as, as guests, honestly, cause they're all. Awesome. All right. So I run a small digital agency right now in Kansas city. Here's the exact question. Some of these, some of these businesses don't even have a marketing budget. What are the ways a small digital agency in 2021 can stand out in the crowd of agencies and deliver the most value to clients? If I were you every night for multiple hours, I would search content in the greater Kansas city area on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter by businesses. I would click the content. I would then audit all three, four of their social platforms. And I would send them an email of a 10, 12 minute audio recording of an audit of what you see they're doing well or where they can improve on their content and leave it at that. It would fucking dominate. (laughs) You would do unlimited business because one out of every six people would just give you the business after the... How do you price point that? Because I probably feel like, and I know Claude mm-hmm. jumped on this in intent wise, I probably undersell myself because I'm afraid to ask the, the larger retainer. You know, I also, you know, don't love, Jim, uh, James knows this. I don't love charging either, like, believe it or not. I, I think the right answer is always a little bit more than the last time until you get 25 no's in a row. Mm-hmm. Then you found your answer. <laughs> Perfect. Right? So if you're charging, what, where are you right now? 500 bucks a month? $5, $5, month? a month? $500 a month per platform. Um, oh, interesting. And, yeah. Cool. So literally, literally, I'm not kidding. You decide to follow my idea. Sure enough, the third one, the six pizza locations, guy, gal writes you back. You get into a combo. Literally, literally, you tell them 550 a platform. And the next one's six. And the next one's seven. Perfect. 
Perfect. Cool. And I'm also creating- Oh, it's how, it, by the way, talk about, that's advice. That's how I built VaynerMedia. I had no fucking clue. You know, it'd be like $3,000 a month. They're like, okay, good. I'm like, fuck, okay. Next one's <laughs> like $5,000 a month. You know, shit. Like you, you just try, you know, $8,000 who, 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 oh, who, who was your first client in Vayner, VaynerMedia? Our first clients were $5,000 a month. It, it, there's this enormous debate on the history of VaynerMedia. Actually, the first client flat out is absolutely Gillette. We, had a, we were an outsourced vendor by somebody else for Gillette to do this event in Vegas, social media content. We got paid $80,000 for something I thought was worth $9. And literally, if I didn't need that money so bad just to pay the first three people, I probably would have talked it down. But, you know, you know beggars can't be choosers sometimes. Um, and I remember thinking, fuck, man, people paid this much in these big, like it was a, but then I didn't want to build that kind of business I, that I wasn't proud of. So we built this $5,000 a month thing. And, and it was a very quick Jets, Nets, Campbell's, uh, NHL, the NHL. Like we, Pepsi, the Jets, Nets, Campbell's, every one of those companies I just mentioned, my brother AJ registered their Facebook and Twitter account on his computer. Wow. <laughs> Wild uh, stuff. Wow. All now, right. Last question. And by the way, I thank all the Ethereum that you probably own now will help you buy the Jets. FYI. Well, well you know, it's not, it's the it's, tax hit I have at a $4,200 base when it's at 2,800 has me in a real pickle. So I'm not, yeah. I'm not as cool as I look on TV. Aren't you I glad you sold them when you did versus this week when Ethereum's half the price? No, because I didn't chick convert the Ethereum into cash yet and I have a tax oh. vulnerability. So I'm in a little bit of my own anxiety these days. Um, last question, and it goes yes. back to the business coaching thing. If business coaching was your business, yeah, and it's, what would seek, what would make it the most profitable? Is it products? Is it events? Uh, what do you think you would do if you were doing a business coaching business to try to make it, you know, profitable? he does do a business coaching business. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Mentors. Yeah, it takes a piece of the upside. <laughs> um, I think I would have done it the way I did it, which is I would try to make the money in speaking. And instead of taking it from people, I have a very big disadvantage, excuse me, advantage that I have to be careful of. I am going to end up being a really great all-time businessman, like not just okay. And so I have to be careful because that actually is like talent. That's like LeBron James saying to you, hey, just practice shooting all day. That's cute, LeBron. You're a fucking all-time athlete. There was a lot of things that, of course you put in the work, but there was a lot of things that came along. As I continue to go through my career, I'm like, oh, fuck. I really hit the fucking DNA lotto at this thing. I need to be careful to not get, of course, oh, of course I didn't fucking try to monetize anybody. I didn't need to. I was capable of building $100 million businesses on the side and giving everything away for free. Not everybody has that luxury. But the, but the seed still sits there, Doc. The more you, and this is why I love Derek so much, but I'm trying to tweak him in a different way. The more value you provide without asking for something, the more leverage you have to monetize. Um, but they're also, much like this program, after years of never considering something like this, I'm like, wait a minute, this is good. And this is my own ideology, which is why Derek got such passion from him because I was in the meta moment. I've never charged anybody for business advice. Now this exists. So we're right here doing it. And I'm trying to get him to do for his business, what I kind of did, because people are winning. People are winning on their investment with 4Ds. And, and I think people would be winning on the, because the second Derek and Suresh decide we're gonna go ham on 10 bucks a month, that product's gonna get epic. Because right now it's subconsciously just like the secondary thing until we can get to the fucking thing and then we'll fucking not charge anybody. I get it. Or, or, you make it fucking crazy good. Perfect. I'm the best salesman in the world because I don't sell anything I don't fucking think is remarkable. Agreed. Whether that's a Pinot Grigio. Do you know why I'm so pumped about Be Friends? Because everyone's going to fucking destroy it. I can't Not wait because... for to Me neither. All right, let's move on. Thanks. All right. Uh, are we up? Is that yep. Yeah, are we up? We're up. Okay, cool. Oh. Cool. So, Gary, uh, we have something. Well, Two questions. We're not going to probably get to plow through three of them because the, the first question is massive and we want to go deep. 
Um, and then the second one is actually a huge ask. But so the first one, I just want to set it up and then I'll, and then I'll, and then I'll give you the question. But you know, we're in the podcasting industry, and you know, we have a very unique event. You know that Matt people like to call us we're the matchmakers for yep, I heard it. podcast, right? And then and, and it's live, it's all in one day. We get masterful keynotes. We've probably had everyone in your C suite a keynote, and then uh, you know we do training prior, during, and even post uh, to help them craft their messages. We have dynamic MCs, and when we're not there, we even have other people to take you know our our seat. So you know from a scalability and and, and duplicating ourselves uh, aspect, but then we realized recently. It's a fucking funnel. Like we created a funnel. That's not the business. We thought it was the business, dude. We were selling yeah. tickets two, three thousand dollars because it was Got live. It, it was yeah. all live. And then when it went virtual, we we're like, holy shit, people want more from us. They want to buy stuff from us and we have nothing. So then we created several products. We we're like, okay, what do we do? Let's build a thought leadership platform, a personal brand liftoff. So we call Podmax Liftoff. That's our Rolls Royce, eight to ten grand. Right. And then we got a month. So then we got um our, our, our PodMax talent, which is podcast booking. We can get you on shows because we built a network of podcasters over 50 strong right now. And we're building and growing it. And then we have podcast production because a lot of the people that come through, they don't have podcasts, but they got get it. inspired by I what we're it. doing. So like, I, I want understand. a podcast too. So, so the biggest challenge Josh and I and our team are facing is how the hell do we get more brand awareness at speed, number one. The, and the, 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 the last part of that sentence destroyed you. Yeah. At speed. Yep. It's been a couple of years though, bro. Okay. How much more? I mean, like, yeah, we're, we're super impatient. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. And Inpa impatience leads to bad execution. Gotcha. Always. I would argue that probably one of the primary reasons that, um, that it's been two years is you've been impatient from day one. Hmm. Yeah, I would say that's accurate. Right, so I think, I think that you really have to have that moment with yourself and say, okay, cool, we're so young, because you are. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, I, yes, I know there's 25 year olds and we've got some youngsters on here, like, I get it. But like, you're fucking young. And so like, what if you actually didn't do it impatiently for two years? Like, what would that look like? Mm. You know? Mm. Yeah. Like what, like, you know, what, the, my question, now let's go a little deeper. What have you, so now you're saying, okay, Gary, we've, we've realized the power of brand because the way people feel about us, look at this, now we want more of it, mm -hmm. right? But what have you been doing to build brand? Or when you say it's been two years, give me the arbitrary scoring mechanism you've decided to create for yourselves that have made you impatient when you say it's been two years and we're only here. Well, in context of the event, which we do um, virtually now, um, we, we sell tickets to it, of course, and we're, it, it feels like a struggle to get 10 or 15 tickets sold. And personally, it feels like, wait a minute, on paper, maybe this is just the patience thing. I'm willing to accept that. But it seems like on paper, we should be selling out five to 10 times more than that. So you're selling 10 to 15 tickets. Yeah. Yeah. How much? Uh, $700 average per ticket. To a virtual or to a real one? To a virtual. virtual. That's expensive. Yeah. Okay. That's a good starting point, right? Like if you even looked at your fellow homies and here's body language, that's a lot. Have you, where'd you come up with that price? So, so the podcast uh, booking industry charges anywhere from three to $500 to get you on one show. So we thought we get people on three shows in one day, plus there's keynotes and there's, there's training. There's okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I understand. Now yeah. we're in a little bit of a better place. Let's start it's over. An, it's an eight hour the, event. The virtual one is not just the content. We're putting you on shows. Oh yeah. You're going to yeah. record. Got it. Got it. That, that changed it a little show. bit for all of us. Right. Yep. So that I understand. Right. Now the question becomes, and this is very real, the quality of the podcasts. Mm. Yeah. I have a funny feeling if you said, hey, everybody, for 700 bucks, you know, when you do our thing, and every one of you is going to be a guest on the Ask Gary B show, on Gary B's podcast, the audio experience. I have a funny feeling you would sell fucking 40,000 tickets. <laughs> so one of the things I, I've seen in businesses that have taken this approach, which I understand now what you're doing, okay. is 
they overestimate their inventory. Wow, okay. You, you've decided Ricky Thompson's podcast is epic of the 50, the, the market's telling you it's not. There you mm. go, yeah, okay. So now let's play it out. And I think that I, I'm sure if I spent the day, I'd be like, do you guys have fucking garbage 50 podcasts? Nobody fucking gives a fuck. Because, you know, I would, I would love to be on three podcasts for 700 bucks right now, to your point. If you get me Rogan and, and Guy, like, and so my intuition is that what you need to work on immediately is the supply. Mm. Wow, okay. Got it? So the market would be treating you better for sure if when they saw the list of the podcasts, they were things that people actually wanted to go on. Wow. So the value, because we have a tough time understanding or what the value is, because sure, we're going to get you on shows, but then what about the training we give you to hone your message and craft it and deliver it in a succinct- my, my, my intuition is you started transactional from day one in, lo- in human form, mm. which immediately destroyed the branding of your education. Mm. Can you say that again? What does yeah. that sure. mean? Yeah, what does that mean? It means that the difference between me and internet marketers that many people look at <laughs> is that when you're trying to monetize from the second you met them, Mm. it's hard to have the relationship that you're actually looking for. You're looking for brand, which is called marriage. Mm. Your execution from day one with your business was, here's my room key, come and meet me in the room. Mm. Because you were transactional from day one. Okay. The first time anybody ever saw you, it was, hey, come to our conference and pay us 700 bucks, we're gonna put you on three podcasts. Okay. You're also both very high. When you're high energy like us, people think it's good, it's bad. Mm. I'm underrated because I come across as maybe full of shit. Mm. So you guys not only were transactional, but I'm fucking loving your charisma here, which immediately made 40% of the people say, these guys are full of shit. <laughs> so you were left with 60%. Got it? <laughs> that's so sick do we have to do anything with that piece of wonderful advice <laughs> no do I, have to... <laughs> I don't think I, I even toned it down what you have to do mm. is is over deliver mm. right I feel like I've always had to I've always had to over deliver to compensate for being a bad like I didn't have the things on paper or the personality that made the main world feel easy with me I'm uneasy mm. they go to LinkedIn it says Mount Ida College they're like, that's not good. They click a video, I'm cursing. They're like, what? You know, like it took me time to show my merit. Mm. Go read the early articles about Vayner Media. People made fun of us in the ad world. So our takeaways are um, patience, which is your your ethos, your everything. So patience, but then But more importantly because patience will come because I think it's even more interesting than that. I'll call patience in this scenario, my sink. We need to go to the well where the water comes from. You, will, you two will be way more patient if we fix the product mm. and you start seeing results. You'll be like, this is fine. You guys will be super fine if Correct. event, right? If I, know, I already know you guys without knowing you guys. If event one was 30, and the next one was 60, Correct. and the next one was 90, you'd be more than fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You'd be patient as fuck. Of course I'm always patient. I've never had a year where I haven't grown in my life. Super easy to be patient. Fine. Mm. Why? Because the fucking well is proper. You can't, in your business model, you might be overestimating the quality of the supply. Mm. Which then begs the question, okay, if that's the case, Gary, we agree. We're going to be self-aware and naked now. Right, these are not the greatest. Maybe it's not. You know, right? The next, and maybe they are. I'm just, I'm making some assumptions based on results because you have too much energy and pizzazz. The only logical answer is the podcasts aren't good. I'm completely committed. By the way, I'm completely convinced that's actually what's happening. You know, so what happens next? You go and look at the top 200 podcasts in the categories you play and you literally reach out to number 200 to 150 and try to cultivate value. Mm. Like you reach out to the Carol Thompson show and say, Carol, 
We want to be homies. We want you to be the keynote speaker to our thing. We want to do it. We want to send you a beer. I don't fucking know, but you need to get, you need to fix your supply. Mm. Wow. We, we always quote you, Gary, when, because this question comes up all the time, like every, every other day, you know, oh yeah, we want to get into podcasts. Maybe you could create it for us, or we're going to come and get on shows through your event. What's the ROI on podcasts? And we always like, Hey, Gary V says, what's the ROI on your mom? That's, right. that's my, that's my default answer. But By the way, is there a better one? A, there's a much better one. <laughs> Thank you. Over a hundred million dollars for Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. And you're not Joe Rogan. So it won't be a hundred million, but it might be a hundred thousand. Ask Guy Raz what the ROI. Ask any single person that's had a podcast. Ask Dak Shepard. Ask anybody who's done well. It's led to books and speaking, all the things that our guy Nicholas, the things that I want Nicholas to do once we find him a proper partner. Let him just go and melt all of our hearts. Mm. And not worry about running a business. It's gold, brother. Awesome. Yeah, the ROI of a podcast is clear as day. Yeah. We always feel like we're too soon, you know, especially you're, you're late. Case. Just we're so late. you know, you're late. Yeah. Podcasting okay. has been a major player for a while. But you're I mean, not- in terms of events and like hosting an event that's strictly around like podcasting, you're, you're looking for an excuse. Okay. You're not too late. Promise too early. Excuse me. Too, yeah. too early is ego talking. Yeah. I'm just too early. No, you're not. You know what I mean? People love that one. We're too early. I'm like, you're not too early. Too early is you're not getting results, so you're going to blame the market, not yourself. Gotcha, Joe. I got. I got. You know, I one more. One more yeah, question. Yeah, go ahead. Stick it in, because I'm dude. And I know this is a huge ask, and if we won't take it personally, if you say no. But remember, you know jab, remember, jab, 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 right hook. Jab, jab, I okay. saw you react yeah, to when the other podcast guest thing was brought up. The list. Yeah, no, want- no, I'm not. No, I'm not going to ask that. I'm not going to ask that. And this you can say no to, brother. And I know the jab, 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 but you know, I'll kick myself if I don't ask this. If you could say, hey, this is Gary Vee and you're experiencing PodMax. Any here's what I'll do for you. Yeah. I, I need, here's why that's dangerous for me. Okay. Your business model is a vulnerable one for me. Uh, and, and Malachi, it's actually, I'd actually be okay to do it if it was less, it's so transactional that I don't want to dilute my brand as being that upfront 100%. voice. But if you separate them, see, one of the reasons I always won was I always separated my media from my business. Look at my earliest stuff. I, by the way, this stunned me. You'll appreciate this because I got a lot more of your Jersey DNA, right? Like I'm about it. I was stunned. I actually, you know what I'm going to do? Joe, can you make the note to yep. tell my team to find this for me? I have to look at the first seven, four, three episodes of Wine Library TV. If we were best buds, Aaron, Josh from Jers, and you're, and you're like, what are you doing next week? I'm like, I'm starting this wine show. You're like, what is it? I'm like, it's the QVC for wine on YouTube. That's what I would have said to you. Because before that light went on on the camera, that's what I thought I was gonna do. I don't know why fucking, this is probably why I've become obsessed with intuition and wanna become like the foremost expert on the subject matter and learn more about it. I'm passionate about this now more than ever. I think it's the most underrated thing in our society. The light goes on. I think I'm doing QVC. If you notice the first episode of Wine Library TV is very expensive wine very high end, very premium. And I think I'm going to go sell this shit because I, first of all, I, I, back to what I said earlier, I believe in the wine. And then, by the way, I ended up being right. The winery went on to become a major player and those were 80 bucks at the time and now they're 500 bucks a piece. But <laughs> it, it was all right. But I thought I was going to say, and something happened. The light went on and I immediately, out of like some crazy subconscious, decided to become America's wine guy, not my dad's son who's trying to drive a business for him. Like, and it manifested quickly. Somewhere in the first five to seven episodes, I panned the living shit out of a wine that we desperately needed to sell. And that's what I'm asking Joe to, because I want to go see if I can see if my face does anything. Because I probably was shocked my damn self. That's, and that's what I want you to do. That's when you will unlock. Thank you. Thanks, You're welcome. Appreciate you. All right. Well, thank you, Yuri, for joining. Thank you. Lively as always. Cheers, everyone. Um, <laughs> I'll take the last couple of minutes to wrap up here. We got you, Gary. Good. Court, great to see you. Bye, everyone. Bye.
Thanks, Gary. YouTube Watcher, what's up? It's Gary Vee. First of all, thank you so much. I hope you're doing super well during these times. Uh, I also want to ask you, please subscribe because my commitment and exploration of YouTube is about to explode. Stories, polls, more content, more engagement, more surprise and delight. This is the time to subscribe. I hope you consider it and I hope I see you soon.